This is one of the most, uh, one of the more ferocious points along here. Uh, very steep. A couple of people have actually lost their lives here. There's a couple of these points which basically sheer cliffs that go straight into the push up and rise, and a lot of people get swept off the rocks. This here, as scary as it looks, is actually not the main danger. The main danger is on the rocks with surging water and people getting washed off. Uh, we've also got a nice big blowhole here. Hopefully, for you guys, hopefully it'll be it'll be puffing. The sea is nice and flat today, which is quite good for this spot. So it might not, but. Um, the gurus here are very excited, as you can see that rock rabbit is gone, so I think we're going to get a bite this morning. Nice morning for fishing. As you can see, we're trying to get rigged up here. We're on live bait. Uh, we're at the place called The Gap on the Port St. John's Coast and uh, also targeting Garrick this morning. As you can see what I've done was, uh, everyone just fishing a little bit of shorter snoot. I decided we're going to be fishing at deep water point and uh, I've made my trace just a little bit longer. This is around about 2 meters so my bait can stay alive a long time. It can swim halfway down to the bottom and then also come up to the surface. Today I opted to go for the uh, Saltus range, same, 6500H, it's a grinder and on that I've got uh, the new J braid, hasn't been released yet, it's a 55 pound and it's, it's quite a nice round, round braid, it's an 8 weave braid and it's quite strong and with that I've got a 100 pound leader which I'm going to test out for the first time. slides and Garrick eats, there's no resistance, he slides up and down. I just cut that big swivel off and put a nice uh, little uh, power swivel and a small uh, splittering as well. And I've got Chroma 7.5, might be a little bit light, we'll see if, it, if I pay the price later. And I've got about a, just over a meter of Chroma 7.5 into a back-to-back back -back mustard, uh, two back-to-back -back mustard. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get ready. I'm going to stand over here like this. Drop in the water and you'll go. The nice thing with the mackerel is you just get a swim like a bow to the end. Fishing with the braid, often you actually it feels like a bite, it's like it pulls so hard and it's so sensitive. Um, but uh, as long as you're feeling that little vibration, it's still the bait. You gotta wait till it pulls and then you let go and you freeze pull them. <laughs> Eight o'clock, we're going up the mountain. The place are either wild here or they're nothing, no in between. That was sold for 6,500 pesos.
took a bit of string. It's, it's, it's actually biting a bit straight. But either biting, going out a little bit and then coming in. It's waiting. There we go. Now it's going. It's going, it's going. Just gonna feed it. Good one. I'm putting this new uh, Daiwa Salt to 6500H to the test. I've got a uh, brand new braid. It hasn't been released yet. It's, it's called the J braid, 55 pound. And I'm using the 14.4 Saltus rod, which is actually quite a nice rod for the grinder. Guys, what I, what I thought was the Garrick, eventually had to turn out to be a I think it was a hammerhead. Went around the reef, and I see it just cut me off. You can see a clean, clean bite on the nylon. It definitely tells you it wasn't a, a garrick, it was a shark. So hopefully, next throw, lucky again. Alright, when, when doing a trip like this, it's uh, it's quite nice to have either a space pool or two reels. Um, here I'm actually fishing with a heavy, heavy outfit. I've got the Dogfight here, the Saltiga 8000, brand new. Um, on it, I've actually got uh, the new Dollar J braid. It's, uh, it's an A2 braid, it's, uh, I'm fishing with 65 pound. Seems very heavy and thick, but it's quite nice uh, for a bit of rock abrasion, if any, but it'll be a little bit better. Also, with the clips and, and, and uh, fishing with a non return, especially for, for cob. It's, it's uh, thick enough to, to have, if, it, if the clip comes back, it doesn't burn you off. Um, and then on the other reel, I've got the uh, Dawa, the ASO. It's a, it's a light frame reel, long distance casting, and I've got uh, Gator Braid 48 pound on that. It's just nice because when you're feeding fish, um, Garrick through like rough, rough water, or if there's quite a bit of wind or whatever, there isn't that much resistance. It's a really thin braid, eight feet as well, slides through the water easy. You don't need to pull too hard with the Garrick. So it's just nice to have two outfits like that really place like this here, you have the bully fish, pull them up on ledges, heavier tackle, uh, and place where I need more finesse or distance, I'll use that that, uh, that other grinder. I've got the same rod, it's a, the Saltist 14 foot 2, 3 piece rod. A little extra distance, nice soft tip, but it's got quite a bit of backbone. I, I really enjoy the action. Um, yeah, it kind of does everything for me on the grinder. But yeah, it's just different fishing, learning the whole time. First time I've fresh edibles, uh, proper edibles with, with, with the grinder, or live baiting actually, but yeah, it's uh, interesting and you just need to learn and go. Fish, be, fish eat compared to the, the bait. If you slide a big mackerel or big shad, sometimes they, they con you. It takes a while before you, you start really knowing exactly when it's a, uh, a garrick or a live bait. I still actually haven't got it tricked out yet. We saw him chasing the mackerel. My weak link on the sinker broke and had the mackerel on the surface. Hey, you saw the hammer. Good job, incredible watching it. We'll just fight this fella as long as we can until he breaks the glass through the, the, the nylon. You're quite lucky. Oh, there you go. Good enough. <laughs> I think this place is uh, as for today. I think we're going to head from here. Uh, try somewhere else, the Garrick Rancher. As you can see, the lights, the braids pulling off the reel. It's a hammer. I'm to see if I can get it. I've got a straight nylon. Come on! It's smaller than hammer trying to eat my mackerel on the surface. And I dumped it a few times, so it's spinning around, coming back to get the bait, so I just let it go. Just get some footage. And I had it in the front end of the gun, and I just put it for the same dialer, and it cut me off.
almost. Eight. I probably threw 10 metres. Alright, well, we've just uh, changed location. We had um, one misfortune of that great fish that Wally had was fighting. I don't know what happened there, uh, what fish it was, but it cut him off. But um, the call was to leave there, it was a quiet bite, so we've, we've moved uh, to another spot here by inches of a river mouth. Um, fishing over a dead high tide. Hopefully, the Garrett will come and move around um, and hopefully get one or two bites. Uh, we've got a live bait here, we've got a, a pool ready, so we, we're just gearing up and ready to rock and roll. I'm in the point. If you guys go to first rock, I'm, I'm just going to stay here. Are you not going to go? I just missed off. There you are. When you release a, a, a fish with a, with a treble in its throat, it doesn't really have much chance. The back to back, basically, a one hook carries uh, the bait and the one to hook the garret. If we hit early enough, like we did yesterday, hook them in the side of the mouth, much better chance of a release. I also find these um, big guns, you can pull much harder than you think you can. I've never straightened one, get a lot of cop, a lot of garrick with them. They really are wonderful. And they're nice and small too. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, after a long wait, and I've just got a bite, and our bait was right in the front, and I see the boil, 
and all this is confused because Lloyd's base is also in the front here. But eventually, I think what happened is I didn't feel it on my brain, and I think it got to my sink, and that's when I see it. I went down, I tightened up, and I was on. So, uh, forget it. So, let's try again. It's quite bright here today, and, and I've got a pair of these macro sunglasses. It's amazing to see the bite. The glare, if you had no glasses on, you couldn't have seen that bite. It was magnificent. So I think this, I'm saying that the macro sunglasses, yeah, I'm, I'm on for that. I'm on you, right? See, Mark and I fished at Port St. John's together for probably, Mark, 15, 15, 15 to 20 years. We've spent many a night fishing for Garrick and Cobb. And when Dion and I come down, Mark fishes with us. He's very knowledgeable. Because he lives here, we don't have to drive around and find out where the fish are biting. Mark will always point us in the right direction. He has been saying first rocks has been producing. And sure enough, we get here and we've got a lot of bites already. And Mark himself is a brilliant angler, but he is a repiler specialist, eh, Mark? Yes, a drop shot. I don't think drop shot and repiler, 
it's almost impossible to beat. Um, Margaret? I'm from Port St. John's and I'm a local fisherman. And I've like all the sponsored Taiwan as well. That's me. What's your favorite fish to catch, Mark? Uh, my biggest fish I've caught is a cob of 48 kilos. And that was on Rapala. The second biggest one was 28 kilos on drop shot. Alright guys, that's GST on all that was an awesome oh, fish. That's a great fish. Uh, we we had, had quite a cool evening yesterday afternoon, missed a couple bites, got two fish out. We struggled today. Uh, plans working as it's come towards the high tide. There's been a couple bites. Unfortunately, I haven't had one, but I'm gonna we're gonna carry on here today. John, thanks so much, mate. Well done, well angled. And uh, guys, hope you stay tuned uh, next week because we're gonna get one or two more character hopefully, and we're gonna be uh, making a mission for some cob. John's got a sneaky sneaky spot or two where there's some really big cob on live bait. So fingers crossed, we're gonna bend uh, with some new species later on. So stay tuned for next week. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Back. 